Hugh Freeze made Media Days all about JarQuest Hunter, but we all know it's way more than that. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into to Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first or second listen every single day as this is a happy hour edition of the show. I'm your host, Zach Black. I mean, of course, Locked On Auburn is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I jumped on with Ben Taylor, host of Auburn Opelika this morning. We talked about Jarquez Hunter, the offensive line, Big Cat Weekend, and more. But the one thing that I took away from Meaty Days and from what Hugh said was I get excited about the part that nobody else gets excited about, which is the offensive line. Yeah. And the reason being is because an offensive line can make a quarterback and a running back look very good when they may not be very good. And this offensive line, as of now, seems to be kind of intact and in a place that maybe Freeze wants them to be at this point. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think Auburn's offensive line was a weakness a year ago. But think No, about I don't that. either. Yeah. Because you're bringing back Connor Liu, who we all think can be one of the best centers in college football. I've talked yeah. to folks last week who think Connor Liu can be the best center in the SEC this year. And we're talking about a guy who hasn't played that much college football. And then you, you think about Xavier Miller, who probably started a year too early, but he was just so talented. They couldn't keep him off the field. Mm -hmm. And so your right tackle now has a full year of SEC experience under his belt. And he's ready to hit the ground running. And then obviously you go out and get Percy Lewis. You scoot your left tackle from a year ago and Dylan Wade mm -hmm. inside the guard. There's just so much to love about the current makeup of this offensive line. But ben, there's been so many times where, a, the, I guess just throughout last year, where things developed a certain way and we kind of stopped and looked back and it's like, oh, well, Hugh Free said this. Like, he talked about the receivers not being good enough a year ago. He talked about the offense being a work in progress. Yeah, he, was, he, he was up front about, you know, the quarterback situation and the rotation that for some reason lasted way longer than it probably should have a year ago. He's been very honest about all of it. And some people will say it's coach speak or whatever. And there obviously is some of that, but he's been very honest in the, in his public settings. And so when he says something, I think we need to listen to him. And what did he say over and over and over again on Thursday? The offensive line, sure, but Jarquez Hunter, Jarquez Hunter, Jarquez Hunter over and over and over again. Called out the media saying, like, yeah, he's underrated. We love it, but th this running back room headlined by Jarquez Hunter is underrated. I just think we need to pay attention to what he's saying. Like, I think Jarquez Hunter set up to uh, to have a really good year this year. Well, and he, he even mentioned Damari Austin. I mean, he brought him up and talked about what a leader in the running back room that he's been and how – you know, that's a, you know, you talk about a one-two punch. Zach, you and I have talked about this for years. This is this is the part where I really like during the Tuberville years, everybody talked about, well, you got three deep in the running back room when you had Ronnie and you had Carnell. And then, you know, you 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 had a couple other guys. I mean, Brandon Jacobs was, was with them at one point in time. Sure. And everybody goes, well, you know, why is that so good? I said, well, when Carnell has them chasing him all over the field and running people over, the first three quarters of the ball game, and then you put Ronnie Brown in, who's running over tired defensive backs because they don't want to square up. We've almost gotten back to that point with what is in the running back room now. However, they're not going to be chasing Jarquez, even though he's faster than I think a lot of people give him credit for, but he's also not afraid of contact. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I mean, we've seen Auburn do this in somewhat recent memory with with certain backs, like Trey Mason, and then, you know, uh, Cameron Artis Payne would come in and kind of relieve him in that 2013 season. And, and to me, Auburn's just going to have even more to deal with. Now, I don't know if those backs that Auburn has are as physical as, as you know, the, the 2013 group or, or the group that you just mentioned in the early 2000s, but I think they can do more. I don't think they have that level of physicality, but the game has changed. It's much more of a finesse type game on the offensive side of the ball now. I think Jarquez Hunter can be physical. Damari Austin, we saw it a little bit. I don't know if that's what he's best at, but Damari mm -hmm. and Jeremiah Cobb, I mean, those guys are so effective 
in the passing game as well, both from a pass um, pass protection standpoint with blitz pickup, and obviously also you know just throwing to those guys out of the backfield. So there's three dudes that can do a lot of things, and that's a lot for a defense. I, you know, Tom Brady used to say this all the time: you want to make them defend every blade of grass. And Auburn has the personnel now with these running backs, with their tight ends, and with their wide receivers, where Auburn's offense is getting to that point. Well, and speaking of going back to the offensive line a little bit, that's going to open up whole. I think that that cohesion is going to make it make the backs a, a lot better. Yeah. Um, I think the backs are going to have more opportunity as well because when guys are split out, they're going to have to pay a little bit more attention to a Cam Coleman that's on the outside as well as Fairweather who may be on the other side. And so that will kind of spread the defense a little bit. You're talking about that every blade of grass. Well, those are going to be blades of grass. They didn't have to touch last year on the outside because they didn't have to worry about an outside receiver being a threat yeah. in certain sets. And so I am curious how much that will open up the running game. And uh, it's funny that you said that they might not be as physical as that crew. Yeah, Brandon Jacobs is the one that caused a rule change to break up the wedge and, and kickoffs because he knocked that kid out from Vanderbilt. So uh, not very many people have changed rules of college football. So when you do that, you can you can say, yeah, I was I was a pretty big bruiser whenever I was in college. Yeah, no, and, and he did it in Super Bowls too. I mean, he was a very effective runner. There's no question. <laughs> No question about it. So, yeah, obviously, Jarquez Hunter, um, Hugh Freeze made it all about him, rightfully so. But this offensive line and the rest of that running back room, it's reason to be excited. Ben, Big Cat Weekend is coming up. Mm. So it's going to be a big weekend. Multiple commitments expected to happen this weekend. Let's touch on that in just a moment. Right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Can you imagine? Can you imagine wagering anywhere other than our friends at FanDuel? I certainly cannot. That is just something I can't think about. In fact, I don't even want to think about it. So I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. And FanDuel gets that. And right now we've got Major League Baseball, and that's about it. So all I have to do, though, with FanDuel is open up the app and I can dream up the bets anytime I'm in the mood. And so this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball and the Locked On Podcast Network. Ben. Big Cat Weekend is this weekend, the premier recruiting weekend for the Auburn Tigers. And there's a slew of 2025 and 2026 targets coming to campus this weekend. It should be a big deal. Well, and okay, I want to explain Big Cat Weekend to those that uh, that may not know what we're talking about. Whenever they bring in these these guys, I forgot what year that this started. Uh, Tuberville I, I started it. So it's been going for yeah. a minute. Yeah. And, and and so been going for a hot minute. Um, I did not realize I never really I told you before, as far as recruiting, I don't start following until I start seeing commits until I start seeing, you know, dotted lines signed. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, OK, to tell me more about this guy. But I remember when people were talking about how bad it was during Harson, the quote unquote big cat weekend that took place and how he only had. I don't know, four or five people that were in that weekend. And now you're talking about upwards of 20 and, and 30 kids that are going to be showing up with possible commitments coming out of it. And this is an important weekend because they roll out all the stops, Zach. I mean, this is like one of the best experiences. A lot of players that have committed have said in the past, their Big Cat weekend was so awesome, especially compared to other whatever the weekend is called at other schools that they may do. Everybody kind of – sure, Daw has a big dog weekend, Roll Tide weekend, whatever it may be. But uh, kids seem to brag about it and seem to really get a lot out of this particular weekend. Yeah, the branding's been big. And so Auburn – Auburn's is on Saturday, and it's interesting. You know, normally they go up against an Alabama or, or Ole Miss has been kind of an interesting one because they're kind of going after a lot of the same guys, Caleb Cunningham being kind of the main one. But – uh, our boy Charlie Five told me earlier this week that and he pointed out that Bama's has moved to Sunday. And so a lot of these kids can do both if they want to. And normally they kind of go head to head, which is interesting. I'm a little surprised that Alabama moved theirs, but whatever. But yeah, I mean, you look at some of the top guys coming in, three five stars, according to on three, Naeem Offord, who's from Parker, he goes to Parker up in Birmingham, committed to Ohio State, but 
Auburn feels really confident about their chances with this guy. So we'll see what happens with him. Caleb Cunningham, who's committed to Alabama currently, one of the more talented wide receivers in the country. I, I think he's exceptional. I think he's exceptional. On three, has him as the number two wide receiver in the class. He's the number one player in Mississippi. Then Isaiah Gibson is a, is a five-star edge committed to Georgia, and he's kind of popped back up on Auburn's radar. I think Auburn feels like they've got a shot for him as well. And so th there's obviously a lot to, to be excited about with the, the top-end talent. But then you look at Jared Smith, who's kind of been projected to commit to Auburn for a, for a while now. He's one of the top players in the state, uh, the fourth-rated player in the state. And then Derek Smith, who's a top three player in the state as well, who's committed to Alabama. There's been some, some chatter about him flipping from Alabama to Auburn. And so do they try to orchestrate some stuff to pop and some news to break this weekend like they did last Big Cat weekend when Perry Thompson flipped from Alabama <laughs> to Auburn and it was a moment. They threw Hugh Freeze in the pool. It was iconic. Uh, do they try to do something like that again? Or is this just kind of a, a weekend that has the pop and circumstance but they just kind of say, hey, this is um, this is just kind of we're just trying to get everybody in and try to take a step forward as a class. We'll see. We'll see what news because it was pretty clear that Perry was flipping going into Big Cat weekend yes. last weekend. There's not that big, obvious, looming storyline that Auburn fans can't wait for going into this weekend. That doesn't mean something big can't happen. It's just a different type of vibe than it was a year ago. Do you consider it big? Because I, just from an outsider looking in, uh, the kid that's been committed to Ohio State, I think it's big that he's looking and he's going to attend Big Cat Weekend. I think that should, if you're a Buckeye fan, that should scare you a little bit because uh, they're going to they're gonna roll out all the stops in order to, yeah. to say, hey, we want you. This is home. This is where we want you. And let's give Freeze as well as – even Tubbs back in his day, but Freeze has done a better job. I don't know if he conveys this to the kids or they've done this on their own. The kids that are currently with the program do a great job of recruiting these players themselves whenever they're in town that weekend. Yeah, and I think it's a culture thing for sure. I think that means you're doing something uh, right from a culture standpoint and obviously getting guys that enjoy being together and are proud of what they're building together, which is exactly what you want. Naeem Offord's recruitment is very interesting. So committed to Ohio State, just kind of out of the blue, Surprised some folks, but he likes the Buckeyes, obviously. Oregon was in it for a, a top corner prospect, and, and they didn't get him last week. He Oregon got second in that recruitment. And so Oregon is very interested in Naeem Offord. And so th they're coming after him hard. He's visited Eugene. And there was, a you know, the last few weeks, a lot of people have made memes and, and, and jokes about, you know, Phil Knight with his unlimited NIL for yes. Oregon to succeed, that makes this interesting. Like, is that really unlimited? Let's see what that looks like because they are they want Naeem offered. And obviously Alabama wants him too. He's the best player in the state, depending on where you look. On three has him as the top player in the state of Alabama and an elite corner defensive back prospect. So he was in Auburn, if, uh, well, I guess it was last month or so, and mm -hmm. Hugh Freeze walked over to the media during a camp and he said, y'all can put this in your story. I'm not losing this kid. We're getting this kid to Auburn, whatever I'm paraphrasing. And so for him to do that, like you just know that's going to be a bigger deal if you don't get him because that's just going to become a joke and a meme and, and other folks are going to use it to tease Auburn. And Hugh Freeze is very self-aware when it comes to that sort of thing. So to me, there's this quiet confidence that Auburn loves their standing and their footing with Naeem Offord. Very interesting recruitment. And if they get him, it sends a big statement, not only to Alabama because he's an in-state guy, but it shoots it up north to Ohio State and to Oregon and say, hey, Big Ten teams, stay out of our state. Yeah, These, uh, these guys are SEC players. Let me go back to SEC media days and ask you sure. about this. Okay. Oklahoma and Texas. I haven't, had your, I haven't gotten your opinion on this. Oklahoma and Texas get involved in this. I thought that it was you and I have had this discussion over and over. I thought Oklahoma had a very – very confident SEC media days, considering that I have said that they could leave Auburn with a losing record to begin their year, even though people have them as high as up in the top 10 in some polls, preseason polls. Um, I just for some reason don't see that, but they may prove me wrong. They may come in here undefeated and then just wear Auburn out, you know, in Jordan hair. I don't know. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. 
So um, what were your takeaways from Texas and Oklahoma? Um, uh, you know, buddy of ours, Jacob, was able to visit with a couple of them. And I was kind of shocked at their confidence from some of the hosts that, that were covering them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, big picture takeaway is Texas and Oklahoma are going to fit in just fine. They're going to become <laughs> SEC brethren very, very quickly, which is great, which is great. We all kind of assume that. The Oklahoma thing is interesting because obviously all the attention was about on Texas. I don't think that's a shock. And I think Oklahoma is okay with it. I think they're annoyed by Texas. And it's this weird rivalry of like, y'all are both irrelevant to each other, but also like you hate each other so much. And it's like the biggest game in the world. And they talk each other up at the same time. It's a very interesting dynamic with that rivalry. But to me, I was surprised when the SEC Media Days preseason poll came out. Because everybody, like you said, appears to be hyping up Oklahoma. And I just don't get it. I don't get it. Like I think they're good. And they're probably a better roster than Auburn is. But replacing all five starters on the offensive line and having a new quarterback, that's just that's not a recipe for success. It doesn't mean you're doomed. But that's not something that most teams would be excited about. And Oklahoma is excited about it. So I think that's a little interesting. I think it's a little odd. The media voted Oklahoma... Eighth, I think, because there were two mm -hmm. spots ahead of Auburn. Auburn was 10th. So, yeah, eighth. And I think that's about right, Ben. I, I was surprised to see Oklahoma that far down on the preseason poll, but I think it's right. And so maybe, maybe the perception of Oklahoma versus what people actually think about Oklahoma, maybe it is a little different. What about Auburn being 10? You have them there? Do you have them higher? Do, if you had to guess, where would you, where would you have put them? If somebody came to you and said – like Blackberry, where do you have Auburn? Yeah, I, I forgot to vote. So, but I, I would have put them around there. I, I probably would Here's have put them. Here's your chance them. right now, buddy. Here's your yeah. chance. <laughs> yeah, they had Texas A&M one spot ahead. I might have flipped Auburn and Texas A&M, so I may have put Auburn ninth, which feels low when you say and you like see the list typed out. It's like, wow, Auburn's so far to the bottom. But it's like the the top four teams in no particular order: Alabama, Texas, Georgia, and Ole Miss. It's like, no, the, those teams would be the top four. Then you think of that next tier. It's like Missouri deserves to be higher than Auburn right now. LSU deserves to be higher than Auburn right now. And you kind of just get through all these teams. And it's like, yeah, where you feel comfortable putting Auburn, it's, it's around nine or 10. And, and then, you know, I feel comfortable putting Auburn above A&M, above, um, you know, above Kentucky, above Vanderbilt, above Arkansas, Mississippi State. So, yeah, to me, nine or 10 feels about right. The interesting thing with this, though, is that doesn't necessarily mean they're like the ninth or the tenth best team. It's just where do they finish right. among the standings? Because it's like half of the teams got a brutal SEC schedule and half of the teams got a pretty favorable one. Auburn's mm -hmm. is pretty favorable outside of Alabama and Georgia, I think. And so to me, if, if they take care of business and start 5-0, and oh, it means they beat Arkansas and Oklahoma and they start 2-0 and oh in the conference and you win one of those three road games between Georgia, Missouri, or Kentucky, I think you're in a really good spot. And all of a sudden, if you can finish four and four or better in the conference, um, yeah, you're in the conversation. You're you're around seven or eight, which is you know an average team in the SEC. Yeah, I think Auburn fans are. I know they would love to have that top spot. I know they would love to have an opportunity to to be an outright SEC champion. However, I think there's a time to look at some reality and some realistics of what's going on. And yes, they do. You and I've talked about it. you got Jacquez. You got uh, you got the offensive line. You you got yeah. the you know the the outsides on defense. And uh, there may be some. Did you say you did or did not like the defensive line? You think it's got it's some growing to do, or are they going to be okay for Auburn? Yeah, they need one or two guys to really lean over their skis and step up a bit. Yeah. See? And so when you start talking about that combination, um, as I told somebody the other day, I said, when we're bragging about the fact that we have one of the best kickers in the conference at this point, or two of the best kickers on our, on our program, that's not where you want to be right now. We want to be talking about the quarterback or we want to be talking about the running back or the DBs or the linebackers. And so yeah. kickers kind of low on the list as, uh, as we've said before. So, um, I think that's realistic. If you can get, will fans be happy if it's eight wins? Do, do, you, do you think fans are expecting nine, 10 wins? I think it depends on who you ask. I think the average Auburn fan would be happy with an eight and four season and they should be. And then you got a chance to go to a, a pretty decent bowl game and, and hopefully you have a better showing than you did a year ago. 
And, and to me, it's all about where you are now versus where you are a year ago. And to me, Auburn's in a better spot now than they were 365 days ago. And I think at the end of the season, they will be in a better spot than they were 365 days prior to that. One of my takeaways from an outsider looking in and just watching all of what took place at SEC media days was the quiet confidence of Hugh Freeze. They seem to be uh, pleased with what Auburn may offer offensively. I think there is a growing confidence with uh, Peyton Thorne uh, running the ship now that he's had him for a little over a year to work with him and spending time in the rooms with him. Um, I think that helps that he's got some guys on the outside that can flat out ball, not to mention a big bruiser in the backfield that's going to be probably one of the best running. Then preseason pick to be the running back of the Southeastern Conference. So yeah, um, did you notice that at all with him, that it, it, he seemed a whole lot – I don't want to say at ease because I'm sure he still has his – worries about what's going to transpire throughout the year but it's not the same Hugh Freeze we saw last year yeah I don't know if I noticed it as much about Freeze but I noticed it a ton with Peyton Thorne so I think I was the first person to interview Thorne on a podcast and uh, after he got to Auburn and that guy versus the guy I talked to on Thursday two different people then it's two different people and, and in fact there was a few questions i asked him is like is it fair to say that the communication offense now is better than it was a year ago and he like laughed he's like <laughs> yeah yeah it is better and it's like okay great and so I, I just think one he's incredibly handsome but two just the overall confidence of peyton thorne it, it came across as this quiet confidence which is what you just described with coach freeze it's not cocky not arrogant but just I have so much more control over what's happening around me now than a year ago with Peyton Thorne. I, I was impressed with Thorne. And like, I, I think people are too hard on Peyton Thorne anyway, but so I, I don't know if I really could have been won over. I think he's kind of already won me over with how he's handled himself. But talking to several folks after Auburn got done wrapping up, Peyton Thorne won a lot of folks over in the media this past Thursday. Does that matter? No, it doesn't. But He's he's confident with whatever they're cooking behind closed doors and over the summer when they're putting the work in, and that's usually a good sign. Yeah, that was our quick conversation with our buddy Ben Taylor of Auburn Opelika this morning. That's on News Talk WANI. Please like the video, please subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.